All right, guys, welcome back. And I'm back. They cannot take me down. <clears throat> if you don't know what's going on, uh, obviously, you would have to be in the chat rooms or uh, you go to my website. The, the URL is right above in that banner. Um, there, I'm not going to let them take me out. I'm just I, I'm not that type of person. I'll uh, I'll make it cost them millions before they take me down. And I have the money to fight them. So but in case my channel does go down, just go to my website and uh I'll have a new channel and a link to more videos. So what's going on a lot has been going on with the stock market and the economy i've just been afraid to upload videos because i was like you know uh one away from uh getting striked out and um but i'm back now so let's uh let's talk about the stock market let's talk about the economy bitcoin i will make a separate video it's not doing anything it's trending down and it's probably gonna sell off a little more or just trade sideways i will make another video on uh, bitcoin and cryptos this video will focus on the stock market economy uh gold silver and uh what's going on so first of all this is not financial advice this is just my opinion uh this is an educational channel for trading and once the video is uploaded, it's pretty much obsolete. Anything could happen. Uh, securities. Everything on the stock market. Bonds. Metals. It's, it's extremely volatile. Extremely risky. Do not invest in anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. Uh, have stops in place and your emotions out. Alright, so let's get into it. I'm just going to go straight to the S&P 500. Here's a daily chart. I just zoomed out. So I made my video that the top was in for the stock market back in um, October, months ago. And um, I'm still sticking to that, okay? Yes, we had a nice rebound, a nice rally. And I bought this dip, if you remember. And I'm still in this trade. I'm just moving my stop higher and higher. I do I think the stock market is still going to sell back off is it going to sell off is it going to go back down I think so but that's based on um well it, it's based on macroeconomics here's the thing here's the deal guys if the price the price would literally have to get back above 2800 for me to start saying I might have been wrong for the all-time high being in. If the price could get back above 2800 And then, then I would consider, you know, trading to the upside in equities in the stock market. But I don't think that's going to be the case. Now you guys have to understand why why did we get such a strong rebound? Also, I had a my TD sequential indicator, which the private members of Wolfpack Cryptos get uh, for free. So two days ago, I had a nine sell signal, and it didn't it didn't happen, right? Let me remove these drawings. I had a nine sell. And I was expecting the price to pull back. But it keeps rallying. Now why does it keep rallying? Well, because of intervention. And what I mean by intervention is Trump no Trump looks at the stock market too, believe me. Because he's hung his hat, his his re-election on the stock market. And uh right now they're making positive trade deals with China, right? And I've talked about this in the past. They're going to do that. It's in the benefit of China and it's in the benefit of uh, the U.S. stock market for them to cut some sort of deal. Will it make a difference in the end? No, I probably not. I don't think so. Maybe a little bit. But um, 
it still doesn't it still doesn't change the fundamentals of the fact that everything is a is um it's in bubble territory it's it's overvalued okay and it's all you know inflated with debt and money printing which brings me to the other um to the other news event or fundamental factor for why we have such a solid rebound in the in the equities markets and that is the federal reserve they just pretty much capitulated meaning they're they're already saying that they're not gonna they're done cutting they're done raising rates <laughs> so for the short term the stock market's gonna rally because of that because when they cut rate when they stop raising rates that means that the banks could keep on lending at small interest rates and then the free cheap money cash flow keeps keeps pumping and a lot of that ends up in the stock market and that's why it goes up now the so these are words right and these are promises and um on the surface they seem really really good and it could change everything but if you get into the nitty-gritty of it it's just temporary it's a short-term reaction of the markets to positive news for the markets now it, i mean if we look at other news events industrial growth all the, the fundamentals the underlying economy um it's i mean we're towards the end of this uh cycle of growth tax revenues are down all right and i'm going to show the dynamic yield curve again look it's going to be inverted soon i'll pull it back here this is here's the yield curve right before the 2008 recession 2009 recession I'll press play. See how inverted it is? The short term interest is much higher than the long term. I'm pressing play now. It's going, it's going. And now it is 2010, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 16, 17, 18. And this is where we are at right now. It's flattening. It's not inverted yet, but it's it's getting there pretty soon. All right. So you know you you have two options. Here we go. Dow jumps more than three hundred points post first four week winning streak since August, and that's because of the Fed capitulating. It's also because of uh, the China talks, the trade talks. And uh, short term, for the next few weeks, months, it's going to keep the markets up. It might keep them trading sideways. But that doesn't mean we're going to go to all-time highs and then higher, and we're going to have a, a booming economy. That's just really wishful thinking, because it's built on debt. It, it's unsustainable. So here's some more positive news, recent news, today or yesterday. Uh, Mnuchin weighs lifting tariffs on China. So, I, I mean, this is all planned. They time this stuff, guys. If they see the markets, they're starting to dump. They're going to do whatever it takes to get the markets back up. <clears throat> so let's get back to uh, technicals. Where was I? All right, here's S and P. The oscillators, RSI, extremely oversold, and it's been not oversold, overbought for quite some time. This is a daily chart, by the way. The MACD, I mean, it's trending up, but like I, you see what I'm saying? This rally is gonna pull back. Now the pullback of the rally. Is going to determine how much more time we have or if there's any chance of the market fully recovering and going to all-time highs so 
if the rally, this rally pulls back, and it will, it'll pull back into this major support area, which was resistance, and I wrote this a while ago, my chart didn't update, um, but you see this white box right here? <clears throat> It's going to pull back into this area in the coming weeks. And then we'll see if it bounces back up and breaks out of this descending triangle. It could pull back and trade sideways within the triangle. That is exactly... And you know what? That's what I'm really expecting at this point. So it'll pull back and it could trade within this triangle. And if it keeps testing this support this support area, it became a support area again now, right? If it keeps testing this multiple times, it's going to break back down. And then we're going to head back down to this area. And that's exactly what I expect to happen. And that's, you know, it's going to take... Um, this will take a while to play out. This could go all the way into spring and summer of 2019, which is completely fine with me. The more time, the better. I don't really want the stock market to go down and crash like tomorrow. Uh, you know, the metal stocks, they look ripe for a bull market, and I'm going to cover that in a second. Let's take a look at some other indicators. <clears throat> Here's the Nasdaq E mini futures, huge rebound. I bought. I also bought the dip, like all the way down here. This is like one of my best trades ever. Buying this dip, um, it was is pretty profitable. There's a lot of resistance up in this area. Anywhere from seven thousand to uh, where it's at right now, sixty eight hundred. So I expect a pullback on the Nasdaq E mini. Now the Russell 2000, one of the guys in the chat room, um, this is Apple, I don't care right now, <clears throat> where's the Russell, here's the Russell, so here's the Russell 2000, this is 2000 mid-sized companies, this is a way better barometer in index, or indice to watch, than the NASDAQ 500. Now, the NASDAQ is 500 fortune companies. These are the big companies. But what you really want to watch for a barometer of the, of the economy as a whole are these smaller companies, mid-sized companies, because those really are impacted and they feel the, feel the hit before the larger companies, because larger companies do corporate buybacks. They get a lot of that cheap money from the Fed. And there's also so much hype around them. Every retail investor like buys, you know, the FANG stocks and their 401ks and IRAs go into them. <coughs> so those are more artificially um, propped up. But um, the Russell 2000, I mean, it, it rebounds just like the rest, right? But uh, it's coming up on a lot of resistance right up in this area as well. And uh, I'm moving my stops because I bought the Russell. Well, an ETF of it. And um, I'm just moving my stops higher and higher and locking in these profits. I'm moving it up here. And I will, as the price goes, if it goes any higher, I will move it higher. And as soon as it pulls back and dips, I will get stopped out. And that's trading strategy. So here's what you guys can learn real quick. This is the simplest and the most effective strategy ever. So you bought the dip, right? You placed a loose stop. And then the, the, the price recovered, rebound, back up to the upside. So you'll place a stop. You keep, you keep a trailing stop going. And you could, uh, with brokerage accounts, you could set them at percentages. You could do it yourself manually, or you could uh, put them at dollar, uh, par you know, when it hits certain uh, price targets. <clears throat> I like to um, do it manually myself because sometimes you get uh, huge volatility swings. Like right here. 
you would have gotten stopped out. I actually did get stopped out, but what I did was I bought back in when I saw the price going back up. So even if you get st stopped out and then the price starts, um, it just turned out to be a dip, then what you do is you jump back in <clears throat> and you keep going with it. This is like a momentum trade. So I bought down here, right? I placed a stop right here. I was stopped out. And they purposely do that too. They run stops. But it doesn't matter. I caught a decent size gain right here. And then once the price started going higher, <clears throat> I bought in right here. And yes, I bought in at a higher price from me getting stopped out. There's nothing wrong buying higher. People like new, new traders and noobs, they, for some reason, they can't buy something back at a higher price. It's like it, 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 psychologically it messes with them. Oh, well, I'm going to have less shares. So what? You're in it for the trade. You're, not, you're in it for the move. You're not in it for um, accumulation. Uh, thinking like that is kind of um, it's dumb. The only time you care about accumulation is in uh, <clears throat> at the bottom of a bear market. All right, so the price started moving higher. I placed a stop here. I didn't get stopped out this time. So I'm placing a stop right here. And if the price goes higher, I'll place a stop up here. <coughs> and then eventually, it's going to pull back. And I'll get stopped out. And that's fine. And we'll see what happens. And then what we do is we evaluate and we watch what happens around this area. If it continues to fall, then hell no. I'm not I'm not jumping back in. If it starts going back up, I'll buy back pretty much where I got stopped out at. And then we go and then we continue the trade higher. That's how you make money in trading. And these are swing trades. This is a daily chart. This entire trade has lasted 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Like uh, two and a half weeks almost now, right? And this is my style of trading. I don't, I don't like day trading in and out. Like nobody has time for that. I, like having, I enjoy having a life. All right. And the more trades you make, the more mistakes you'll make. It's just odds and numbers. <clears throat> I mean, this is like gambling, guys. It's like poker. You just have to know your odds, and you have to have a strategy. All right. Um, what is this? Here's a uh, crude oil. We're getting a rebound. It, this all depends on the dollar. I think. Um, I think gold's gonna recover a little higher and then trade sideways. But I'll cover that some more in detail. I don't want to make this too long of a video. Alright. Um, is this the fangs? Here's the fang stocks. It broke out of that uh, descending bearish channel. And uh, they're going higher with the rebound in the, in the entire stock market right now. So um, the FANGs, the 500 fortune companies, they're leading the way for this uh, <clears throat> rally and rebound. All right, let's take a look at Europe because as we can see, there's, um, there's movements. It's like revolutions uh, brewing in Europe. And I'm going to talk about Deutsche Bank in a second. Here's the Europe uh, financial sector. You can see it's been clobbered. Oh man, my throat is really killing me right now. Um, it's been clobbered. And it's down at around 2011 and 12 lows. Even uh, 2016 lows. Uh, this looks kind of like crude. It, it, here's the thing guys. If you guys have noticed... A lot of these markets are extremely correlated with equities, and that's because of um, it's because of uh, central bank uh, QE and whatnot, and artificially low interest rates. Things aren't supposed to be this correlated, but they're extremely correlated. So uh, 
the financials in uh, Europe, I mean, this is really looking like a dead cat bounce. It could recover higher, and then we'll and then it'll probably trade sideways, and we'll see what happens. But I I guarantee it's going to go lower to all time lows eventually in the coming years. Uh. Here's, um, I believe, the European markets. No, these are the U.S. financials. They also rebounded with equities. Looks just like the S&P and the rest. I mean, look at this. It looks just like it. All right, here's the European markets. And this is going to affect the U.S. stock market, the dollar, precious metals, even cryptos, I believe. <clears throat> so these are the European indices. You can see that, you know, they don't look all that different from the U.S. equity markets. And uh, they're, they're so correlated. It's disgusting. Which, in the end, could give you the argument that uh, if Europe goes, so will the U.S. Although, Europe and China and Asia is making... Well, China. I don't want to say all of Asia because Singapore, uh, Taiwan, a lot of the other Asian countries are doing actually really, really great right now. Um, those emerging markets. But, you know, China, Australia... Europe, not so much Russia, <coughs> but uh, Europe and China, they are, they're making the U.S. look good, their markets, and it's pretty much, the U.S. is like the best looking turd in the yard, and uh, with Europe going through um, financial, the financial sector and the banking sector, uh, going through turmoil is going to make the U.S. look better. And for the short term, it could uh, prop up the U.S. markets for longer. And the dollar. And, the, it, you know, propping up the U.S. dollar props up the U.S. economy as a whole. So, um, because the dollar is going to be the best, crappiest alternative. Besides metals and crypto, right? Um, <clears throat> so, as we see more... Uh, cracks that are turning into fissures in Europe and that's why we're having riots like the yellow vest movement and all that in Europe it's it's economic as well if anything it's probably it's more economic than anything to be honest <clears throat> as we see the largest banks in Europe uh, really t teetering on the edge here as Deutsche it's going to have a global impact. <coughs> now, Deutsche here, I mean, they have tens of trillions in derivatives. And they're trying to socialize it through uh, uh, combining banks. Like, let's say there's another bank that's not as bad. And they're going to combine them and have a merger. And then it'll... Uh, prop up Deutsche for a little bit longer but it's 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 like a band-aid on a um, wound that needs like a lot of stitches on like a deep wound so it's going to infect and it's eventually going to kill the patient <clears throat> and a band-aid's not going to cut it and that's pretty much what's happening in Europe what else is going on So, that's the current situation with the markets. Let me talk about gold in a second. <clears throat> so, U.S. manufacturing output posts biggest gain in 10 months. That just came out today. Um, that was another reason why the market just kept going higher. It, how does it post the worst losses last month and the highest gains in this month? 
you guys understand what I'm saying? Economies don't flip around like that. They don't move around that quickly. I don't trust these numbers. I mean, these are headlines. Then That's what I'm saying. I mean, these markets are manipulated by news more than anything. All right. <clears throat> Let's take a look at gold before I die here with my throat. All right. Now, this is a weekly chart of gold. You see my blue line? It's my equilibrium line. That's what I call it. And then this is the 200 week moving average, the white thick line. And this is the price of gold in the past like 20 years. In uh, 2002, well, this bull market in gold started in 2001. That was the time to buy because one ounce of gold was 250 bucks. And now it's at uh, 1,280, right? It's all-time high was two thousand dollars, <throat> so that's almost a two thousand percent move just in the price of gold in like ten years, and this is because of all the the central bank manipulation, money printing, and QE, and artificially low interest rates. Uh, Alan Greenspan started; they called it the Greenspan put, and they started, and he started. Uh, Lowering interest rates at any sign of the economy slowing down in the early 2000s. And then it started a bull market in uh, precious metals. Now you can see my blue line here. It was crossed by the 200 week moving average. And that signaled the next bull run in uh, gold. And that lasted 9 years. From 2002. I mean it really started in 2001. Even if you bought in 1999, you would have been really looking real pretty. So, uh, and it caused this decade-long bull market. Now, of course, we've had the blue line cross in the past. Like right here and right here. And those are, they caused little rallies. But there were false breakouts and then it broke down. But why would this time be a little different? Well, because this will can this will be a continuation of this bull market you see bull markets uh cyclically long term on the macro scale when you're looking at the weekly chart to the monthly and the yearly charts <clears throat> bull markets last for decades like the equities market the u.s stock market i mean that's been booming for like a very long time since like you could arguably say the 1980s and that's because of uh, bonds have been in a bear market since then, since Paul Volcker, right? Because they've been lowering interest rates ever since then. <coughs> All right. So the 200-week moving average crossing my blue equilibrium line here is possibly uh, signaling that we're going to go into the next leg of this bull cycle. In gold and it makes sense because the national debt and the endless money printing has been going on for too long it's it's actually been going on longer than ever before in history this isn't the first time they've done this um, but this is the longest it's ever gone with the dollar being the world reserve currency so the situation is I mean we're also in the in a few months from now, we will have the longest running bull, mar bull market in stocks in, in history of the U.S. In history, in like human history, we'll have the longest bull, uh, bull market cycle ever. And I, I, I'm not exactly sure when. I'll look it up. But it's not. we're not far off. I think like six more months of a bull market in stocks and uh, it'll be the longest bull market in history. Uh, so it's long in the tooth and um, the debts are just astronomical and unsustainable. So more than likely what's going to happen here when this 200 week moving average crosses my blue equilibrium line is metals is going to go into another bull run and it will be a continuation from the start of in 2001. All right. And it'll just be another leg up. Let me zoom out to the monthly. 
1976, when the dollar was taken off the gold standard, that started the 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 big actually really started it on um if you're looking at it at a decades long cycle, that's when it really started. And uh it caused this bull bull market in gold. And then it pulled back and uh, consolidated. This is actually consolidation for like 10 years. Huge bull market. Another consolidation for 6 years. It's been consolidating for 6 years. Can we get a few more years of downside until like 2021? Or t actually 2020. So 2 more years. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I mean the... The downside risk, I don't see it going below 1100 because we're going to come up on the 50% Fibonacci line. All right. So your downside risk is very minimal to your upside potential. Because the next upside move is going to be enormous. Because this recession coming up may be the last recession and the central banks can't stop it by just doing more QE money printing and artificially having the interest rates at zero to liquefy the, the, the banking sector, financial sector, and the economy with cheap cash. Because at that point, everyone's going to lose faith in the, in the currencies themselves. And that's when this goes into a phase four hyperbolic <clears throat> bubble. Like we saw in Bitcoin, which only lasted one year, if that makes sense. All right, guys, if you found this video informative, educational, thumbs up. Please share it wherever you can, um, Facebook, Twitter, anywhere, really. And uh, check us out. All the links are below this video. Um, I will... I did not have my cameras on. I will, well, here's the Wolfpack Crypto's research report, right? <clears throat> You'll find that in the private membership, and then hopefully by Monday, I will, um, I will have the, the miners going, and I also have that report as well. Also, there's a written report that's going to go along with the spreadsheets. And for the miners, it's going to be like really long reports, it's not like cryptos. This is you have to look at balance sheets, revenues, earnings, ores, and all kinds of crazy stuff. And that's why it's extremely time consuming. It's taken me months to to finish this and prepare it for you guys. Cause even though I've researched this stuff for years, you got to go back and see what's new. And then while you do that, you end up coming across other uh, opportunities and whatnot, right? So it's coming hopefully by Monday. Also, if you look at the the gold chart, yes, I, it's pulling back right now. Uh, there was a 13 sell. And uh, right now it's sitting on support. And uh, I will probably make another video by Sunday to touch base on shorter term trading. Because at, at 1,280, there's support. We'll see if this holds. If this holds, then that means the price is breaking above the blue line. And that's a big deal, right? I just told you guys why that's a big deal. Here's the weekly chart zoomed in. And look at this. I actually expect the price to pull back into it. For like one or two weeks. And then all of a sudden, it'll cross and then shoot the price out. And if it could get past 1380, then we're back in the the multi-year bull market in metals and mining stocks. All right, guys. Until next time.